We now will hear from Elsie Redmond before we open for questions and debate. The first thing I want to do, again, my name is Elsie Redmond. I'm from the great city of uh, Chicago. I am absolutely uh, humbled and glad to be here among each and every one of you at this conference. This conference is very uh, important. It is important for us to come together to, de to strategize and uh, go develop tactics. And one of the ways to do this is as a group itself. So I'm really, really sort of like uh, happy to be here and be a part of like, uh, this, this, this conference. One of the things I wanted to start off with is sort of like, uh, I've been uh, a community and labor organizer for the past 30 years. Okay? And uh, through, that, through those 30 years, you know, it's been, it has its ups and its downs. You know, strategies change, tactics change, people change. Uh, but what's important is, as an organizer, is to grow and to learn uh, and be willing to learn and be willing to grow. A lot of my contemporaries, you know, uh, they, they said, well, this is the way I learned how to organize. And this is the only way to organize. And anything else is not real organizing. And I do not follow that philosophy itself. What's really sort of important is that we develop long-term strategies, is that we develop uh, long-term tactics and have our tactics to change as it fits uh, the issue in the campaign that we're working on. So a lot of my sort of background came from my family, all right? My, my grandfather was a member of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Porters uh, Union. Uh, and, you know, when I was growing up, he would talk about the struggle to win uh, that union, the struggle against uh, racism, the struggle against uh, oppression, the struggle against Jim Crow. And all of that was involved in his, his campaign to win uh, his union. But one of the things is that I learned from my uh, uh, grandfather and, and my parents was that resilience and perseverance is important in the long-term struggle itself. And you know what, uh, when my grandfather, I think it took them 12 years to get their union uh, organized, but they kept at it, you know? They persevered, they dealt with hardships, they dealt with victories, they moved forward. Now, my grandfather was also a very international person. He raised money for black soldiers to go to uh, Ethiopia to fight the fascist. And you know, like he, he saw that as a way to really understand what's happening internationally. And as an organizer over these like, you know, three decades that I've been organizing, that's been very important to me as well, to have that sort of internationalist perspective uh, that, you know what, uh, organizing can be done and should be done in any sort of like uh, place. I've had the uh, the pleasure to like you know organize in Liberia. I've had the pleasure to organize in uh, Belarus, uh, Russia. I've had the pleasure of organizing in East Timor, uh, which is in the, in Indonesia. And you know what? I've had the like uh, opportunity to organize in Iraq uh, as well. And that sort of international. Uh, point of view, I think it's very important in the organizing that we do. Because a lot of times the United States, our organizing is so isolated, all right? We're trying to build this like a uh, uh, house. We're trying to get these workers sort of organized, all right? We were trying to deal with these sort of issues. But sometimes, you know, you don't, you don't have that internationalist sort of perspective in terms of, you know, what, how global capital really controls everything uh, in this world and how everything links to global capitalism and the power of global capitalism itself. Uh, we cannot have a society where it's us against them, all right? And what that happens in us against them, well, you know what, it's the, it's the like, uh, Latinos who are still in our jobs. You know, these, these folks uh, uh, over in like, uh, China who are making these products, they're the ones who are destroying our like, uh, economy. The people who are trying to uh, get to the United States, you know, they're the ones who are taking our jobs. And I've had organizing campaigns, particularly with black workers, who actually believe this, that, okay, you know what, uh, our problems is because, you know what, they want to hire Latinos and not us. Uh, I was in a campaign where we organized uh, black and Latino temp workers. 
Uh, it was a very difficult campaign, primarily because uh, when the temp workers, the black temp workers would come to the sort of facility itself, they were overlooked. And then the, uh, the company would hire Latinos, all right? Primarily those who were undocumented. And if they said anything or tried to raise their voices against what was happening, uh, you know what? The manager would say, we're gonna call ICE, all right? Mm -hmm. And then management would tell the blacks, hey, you know what? Reason you guys can't get no jobs is because, hey, you know what uh, these Latinos are, all right? So your, your, oops, sorry. Your enemy, your enemy is, are them. Our enemy is not us, okay? We want to hire you, but you know what? These Latinos are the ones taking your jobs. And there were blacks who would go for that sort of stuff, all right? And with my organizing, what I've always tried to do, all okay, right, is that, you know what? We deal with the issues of race and class, and we deal with those issues up front, all right? Now, in the old sort of Alinsky organizing way, you know what? You don't have any sort of like uh, uh, issues that are critical or issues that you know may split people apart all right but that's the old fashion of organizing the new fashion of organizing is addressing the issues of race and class up front and in this campaign with these uh temp workers we addressed it up front we brought the workers together the latino workers and the black workers together all right and we talked about these issues and we heard from them about hey you know what this is what's going on but then we gave them this sort of internationalist perspective in terms of, OK, you know what? The war is against management and the people who run these companies. The war is not between you and the you and them. And how do we organize like uh, together? And it was that was you know, it was difficult, but it happened. Right. We won about 20 million dollars. Uh, for uh, workers because, you know what, they were, the black workers are being discriminated against, but the Latino workers are being discriminated against as well, all right? This is not a separate campaign. We're all in this together. That's what organizing should always be about, around the issues of race, around the issues of class. How do we have discussions about these issues? How do we organize people? How do we move them beyond where they are right now? And that's important in organizing, as it always has been. And it's been important in the organizing uh, that I've done. I wanted to talk about sort of like uh, uh, a few sort of campaigns around sort of, you know, black led uh, organizing. Uh, one of the things is I used to be uh, an organizer with the bakery, confectionery, uh, tobacco and grain millers international union. All right. And that's called like uh, BCTGM. Right. I had the, uh, the pleasure of being appointed as the, uh, the head of the, um, the, the union. All right. For about two and a half years, I ran this union. And you know what? This union was really sort of different. All right. You had whites, you had blacks, you had Latinos together. Right. All of them hated each other's guts. All right. The white workers were, you know, primarily in the uh, distribution center. They were primarily sort of Trump supporters. They're primarily sort of backward in their thinking of, you know, the future. All right. Uh, the black workers, they they sort of controlled the, the facility itself. And what they did was like, you know, try to keep down the Latino workers. All right. And when I came in, the first thing I did, the first thing I did, I brought everybody together. OK, and I made it very, very clear. All right. That, you know, the enemy is the company. The company wants to take your health care away. You know, the company wants to reduce your wages. All right. The company wants to send your like, uh, jobs where they can make more money. And it's not it's not the whites. It's not the blacks and it's not the Latinos. And if we're going to have a union, we're going to have a union. All right. And we're all going to work together. OK. And that was difficult. It was really difficult. I mean, we had our membership meetings and people would argue and yell and stuff like that. And I would like, hey, all right, we're going to be a union. All right. And our enemy is the company. Our enemy is not each other. Right. So one of the first things I did is I like assigned all these Latinos uh, to be uh, stewards in the, uh, uh, the union before they weren't they weren't really only maybe one or two. So I, I made sure we had like 18, like boom, all right? Because 
those workers became sort of the larger percentage and they wanted to make sure that they were being represented. So we made sure that they were being uh, represented. Uh, with the, uh, the white workers, it wasn't like, you know, well, we were against them. It was like, okay, you know what? You have backward ideas, all right? So, you know what? We don't want those backward ideas affecting this union uh, itself. Because, you know, a lot of times they blame the union for all the problems that were going on, and they didn't look at the big picture in terms of, like, uh, the company uh, itself. Right? And I think that that was something that was, uh, you know, de very difficult to really sort of organize around. All right, because people had their prejudices of each other. Uh, you know, they had their opinions of each other. They didn't see each other as being a part of one group that, you know, it is us against the company itself. All right. They had thought that the company was more on their side than the union. All right. And we had to change that dynamic around. And I was happy uh, that we did. It was difficult. Uh, you know, we had issues. Uh, one particular issue is uh, I was moving to kick out a member of the union because of racism, right? It was like, you know, they're, they're, they're being racist, all right? And I told him, in this union, we will not allow racism whatsoever, all right? So if, we're gonna, if you're going to be racist, I am going to move. There's like a, a provision in every international uh, union's uh, constitution that allows you to remove a member for particular reasons. And I was going to remove a member for racism, all right? really didn't go over well with the international because, you know, they thought, OK, you know, you're going to remove this person. You're going to set a president that could, you know, affect the, like, uh, the entire union when these issues occur. I said, no. All right. It is as as the, the trustee of the local itself was in my with my power to remove a person based on uh, violation of the Constitution of the union itself. Mm -hmm. And it was very controversial. And it caused a lot of like stir and it caused a lot of like uh, discussion. But you know what? We were sort of like uh, successful in getting rid of uh, that uh, that member. And it, it sent a message to everybody else that this is how the union is going to be. We are a union itself. All right. We're not the white union. We're not the black union. We're not the Latino union. We are the union that represents all the workers here, even though we know we have differences. All right, we have our biases, but we need to work together. If we're going to like change anything in the company. And in the end, they did. OK, they went on strike. They went on strike as a group. Uh, they won their strike and they uh, won every uh, one of their demands itself. OK, but that was a struggle. It's like a two and a half year struggle and a fight to get that sort of local to be where it is right now. And, and we had to get rid of people and we had to bring in new people. But one of the things is it was successful. Okay? I think another important sort of aspect of like organizing is sort of, you know, the inter intersection of labor and racial justice. Now, one of the things is that I was been intricately involved in is organizing white workers and organizing the white working class. One of my duties as uh, the uh, international representative of BCTGM was I negotiated contracts and I negotiated contracts in the grain mill industry. If you know anything about the grain mill industry, it is overwhelmingly white. But maybe for a few areas and, you know, maybe in South Dakota and uh, like a, a few other places. But in terms of the grain mill industry, it's just overwhelmingly sort of white. Uh, it's people who have been there for a long period of time. Uh, folks who haven't really been involved in sort of like, you know, a, a grassroots action. And to be honest with you, they, uh, they never had a black person to negotiate their contracts before. Right. So, you know what? I when I came in, I said, let's get to know each other. All right. And I said, I am here to win the best contract for you and the members of this local. OK. And the only way we're going to do that is we have to work together. And if we don't work together, you guys are, you know what, like uh, bringing up stuff and, you know, we're not, we have no unity on the other side. All right. Then we're going to run into problems. There was this one sort of local uh, in uh, uh, South Dakota. And, you know what, this, this local had, you know, yeah, not a very good reputation. All right. And, you know what, they're probably all a bunch of racists and you know what uh 
uh, you know, talk about, you know, what uh, blacks and every and the Latinos and everything like that. OK, but there was a particular issue that was important. The company was forcing them into a 24 hour work period. So, you know, you work 12 hours. OK, then, you know, you have a two days off and you work 12 hours again. Right. And the company was in the negotiations with trying to win that. All right. Now, there was a certain group who, you know, yeah, this is good for us. You know, primarily, uh, you know, the older guys who were, you know, are about to retire anyway. OK. The younger folks were like, hey, I got a family. You know, I want to see my family. Uh, I don't want to be at work all these like uh, 12 hours. OK. So I told them, all right. Regardless of what you think about these like uh, issues, you know, it's the company. The company itself wants you to like, you know, work these sort of extra hours. The company itself is trying to take your health care away. All right. The company is the one that's trying to close down like uh, your facility. All right. So if we're going to win anything, we have to win it together and we have to win it as a, a, a solid and cohesive group of individuals. And that's something uh, that was difficult to do. It was difficult, all right? We had some really sort of serious ups and downs. We had some serious sort of issues. But what was important is, you know, this, the, the organizing I've done among the, uh, the white working class, one of the things is it made me appreciate Bruce Springsteen music even more, okay? It really did, okay? Because he speaks to their condition and he speaks to their issues. And I saw, okay, I see why this is very important. You know, being in these communities, talking to these workers, sitting in their homes, talking to them, finding out about what's happening, how they feel about issues, how they really feel about like uh, issues. OK. And I, I found that, you know, it was not what I perceived as what the white working class is and what the white working class has been. All right. There are definitely sort of issues. I mean, you know, the, totally the issue of guns. I was in like uh, negotiations with like uh, one of our uh, uh, members and, you know, he was talking about the number of guns he had. And he said he had 300 guns. I was like, oh, OK, it seems like a lot. <laughs> All right. You know, it totally seems like a lot to have that uh, 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 many guns. And you know what? I, I have my my like, uh, ideas about, you know, weapons and, you know, sort of the usage of like uh, weapons. All right. But we had a good conversation about 300 guns. It's like, OK, you have 300 guns. OK. All right. Do you really need that many guns? OK. And, you know, we had this conversation and we're talking about gun control. Well, and you know what? We're talking about uh, the history of like, you know, gun control. And, you know, he told me how, you know, the, uh, the left wants to take their guns away from them. And you know what, uh, you know, they're going to knock on their door and take their guns, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I told him, that's absolutely foolishly ridiculous. And it comes right out of the playbook of the National uh, Rifle Association. OK, so, you know, what? but we had those conversations and they were hard conversations, but we had those conversations. And as an organizer, it is important to ensure that your folks have growth uh, and that, you know, you're really dealing with the issues and issues of race must be addressed, okay? I was in like a, a, a confirmation, like, you know, the, the group was confirming the contract itself, okay? And this guy got up and said, you know what, like uh, this skinny black kid from like uh, New York uh, has been giving us a, a bad contract, okay? So I got up, all right, and said, well, okay, I'm not from New York. I am from Chicago. OK, two, this is the best contract that you guys have ever had. Right. And if you vote down this contract, then we got to go off strike. And I told him, I am all willing. If you want to go on strike, we can go on strike. Right. Just, just say the word and we'll go on strike. OK. And I, and I asked this guy who, like, you know, said the skinny black kid, and I, I confronted him. Do you want to go on strike? I mean, you're talking big, but are you ready to go on strike? But then he got all silent. I'll go, well, I didn't need all of that. <laughs> no. It's like, ah, no. Okay. Either you sign and go with this contract or we go on strike. Okay. 
That's, that's it, all right? Do you want to increase in your health care, all right? Do you want a wage increase, right? Do you want a, like a, a pension plan? This is the contract to go with, okay? And I told him never, ever address me as the skinny black kid again, <laughs> right? So in those meetings, I was very confrontational. People brought up stuff, I would go right back at them, all right? They bring up race stuff, I go right back at them on these issues, okay? I didn't hide or you know shield myself from those issues because I thought that they were important issues to have and important issues to discuss, and I continue to believe that. Okay? Now, one of the things that I've tried to do in my organizing is develop trainings for organizers, and particularly sort of like uh, both like uh, black and white organizers as well. All right, so we can understand the like uh, uh, the issues. And one of the things is that I've done is combine sort of community organizing with sort of like philosophical underpinnings, all right? That we talk about the issue of philosophy itself. And there are two sort of like folks that we would like uh, use this sort of philosophy uh, of. One was James Baldwin, right? And sort of like uh, his philosophy, which was that the individual and the community are interconnected. Our, identity, our identities are shaped by the communities we inhabit, and we have a duty to work to improve our communities. So that's from Baldwin uh, itself. The second person was Albert Camus, all right? And Camus talked about rebellion against injustice as necessary. Mm -hmm. So we developed this training where you know, it combines this community organizing with these underpinnings of philosophical uh, uh, notions, okay? We talked about the myth of Sisyphus, all right? Really quick, the myth of Sisyphus is, you know, this dude pissed off the gods, all right? And they said, okay, all right, you're gonna, you're gonna do this, okay? You're gonna take this rock and you're gonna bring this rock up this hill, all right? And once you get that rock up the hill, it's gonna come back down and you gotta go back and do it again, okay? And everyone thought that Sisyphus, this was a punishment for Sisyphus. No, it was not a punishment. He used it as a system of rebellion against the gods itself. He had said, yes, you know what? This, this rock is gonna go up this hill and this rock is gonna come back down this like hill, but you know what? I'm gonna keep doing it because I'm resisting the oppression that you have given me. And I've tried to use the, like, uh, uh, the myth of Sisyphus in, in my organizing, that that's what our work is. You know what, we're, we're bringing that like uh, rock up the hill and sometimes you know, it comes back down. But we have to have that sort of resilience and we have to have that grit to ensure that, hey, you know what, it's going up. And it may come down, but it's gonna go right back up. And that's sort of the ebbs and flows of organizing uh, itself. So I just wanted to say, you know, sort of thank uh, uh, the, uh, the folks who, you know, invited me to this like uh, conference. I think it's like very, as I said, very important to have sort of dialogue around the issues. Um, and I would say that organizing uh, workers of color is absolutely essential, but also organizing a white working class is absolutely essential as well. We cannot win without each other. And that's really very important that we can win without each other, okay? Our enemies are, are very sort of rich and our enemies are very united, all right? And we are sort of like uh, divided, particularly among race and particularly among like uh, class, particularly among geographical uh, location. And one of the best ways that we can ever make any sort of like uh, severe change is to come together and understand each other's struggle that your struggle is my struggle and that means that's our struggle. So, thank you very much. Thank you.